Today, I went for our first run in the Rocket X. Welcome back to the channel everybody, my name is Brendan and on this channel we talk all things running from running shoe reviews to helping the beginner runner get started on their running journey, that's what I want to do. So if that's something you're into, hit that subscribe button right down below, it would really mean a lot. And how about we defeat that YouTube algorithm by pressing that like button. Alright, let's get into the Rocket X. So the Rocket X weighs in at 231 grams or 8.14 ounces, so it's nice and lightweight. And that is for my size, size 10 and a half US men's. And actually the Endorphin Pros weighs the exact same, so it's quite interesting. And I didn't really expect that, but hey, it works out for me. I like that lightweightness. It has 32 millimeters of stack height in the heel. 27 in the four foot for a five millimeter drop. The Rocket X is sporting a one millimeter carbon fiber plate right down here. You can kind of see the groove that I would assume it's sandwiched into, but who knows? I was watching Forrest the Dean Runner video on this shoe as well, and he kind of had the same thought that this cutout right here is where the plate is. It makes sense to me. If someone from Hoka is watching, would really appreciate it if you could confirm or deny our suspicions. I went true to size in this shoe and I'm so glad I did. It's not too wide, it's not too narrow, it's feeling just like mm, the creme de la creme. The Rocket X has a mesh-like upper and actually, if you have a Rincon number one, that upper feels exactly the same as this. But I will say that the Rocket X has a bit more structure to it than the Rincon one upper. The Rocket X has these like honeycomb looking things that I assume help with that little bit of structure. They also have these overlays like the Hoka and the Hoka label, I guess, Hoka icon, whatever you want to call it. Those are there to provide a bit more structure as well. And I think overall, it does a good job of doing that. The heel cup is quite built up, I have to say. So if you don't like a shoe with a built up heel cup, look elsewhere. This does have a bit of structure, but for me, I love it. I, I love it so much. The ankle collar is padded, not crazy padded, nothing like the Triumph 18 or Ride 13, just enough padding to give you a little bit of comfort, something I really appreciate. The Achilles flare, nothing like the Clifton 7 by any means, but it's there and I, I, I love it. I, I don't know, I know some people didn't like it in the Clifton 7, but this whole thing back here, it's working out really well for me. Moving to the tongue, it's not padded. It's like a very thick piece of fabric and you know what guys? there's one thing that I love so much about it. It's half gusseted, yes. Gusseted tongue alert, this thing is absolutely fantastic. It felt so good in terms of lockdown. This whole upper felt fantastic in terms of lockdown. I didn't have any slippage, but there's one thing I have to mention. One downside of this upper for sure, and that is, look at these laces. Like, what is the point of laces of this length? It was the same thing in the Clifton 7, like Hoka, why? Why such the long laces? It doesn't make sense to me, but you're lucky that's an easy thing to fix. What I do is I just double tie it and it's no big deal. They didn't go un undone once, but I can guarantee that if I didn't double tie it, these laces would have been coming undone. That's for darn sure. In terms of breathability, this upper is through the roof. Like, oh my goodness, guys. I was out there today, it was 17 degrees Celsius. I had smart wool, merino wool socks on. And typically my feet would be just, just not safe to be around. Like once I take the shoes off, typically you kind of got to leave the room. They're that bad. I'm sorry for that image or that smell, whatever you want to call it, but it's the truth. But in this, my feet actually did not really sweat. I have to say the breathability is through the roof and kind of concerning now that it's, I think it's back down to like one degree Celsius today. So I don't know, my feet seats might be a little cold if I were to take this out. I don't know. Who knows? But anyway, the upper guys is fantastic. The lockdown is top notch. The breathability is through the roof. The laces, yeah, they're kind of kind of crappy, but I mean like double tie them and you're good to go. So 
Overall, guys, this upper is top notch and I have to give it three out of three. This midsole is just EVA. No crazy PVACs, no nitrogen infusing, nothing. Just EVA was densities tweaked and Hulk is calling it like a lightweight EVA. Sure, I don't know, that's some marketing talk. I, I don't know the first thing about material science, but I will say it's lightweight and when you're going along, it feels fantastic. Is it bouncy? It's not bouncy, that's for sure. It's nothing like a sensation I get in the next percent. It's, it's nothing like that, but it's not trying to be. What it does very, very well is making for a smooth ride. So this EVA mixed with the carbon fiber plate, it's fantastic. It just feels like you're going on an ice rink right after that Zamboni went by. You know, super smooth. And if you don't, you don't know hockey, it's kind of like you're throwing a bowling ball down that lane, just nice and smooth rolling. That's how I felt when I was running in this shoe. Thanks to this midsole right here, guys. It's absolutely fantastic. You're just rolling through there. It's so effortless. Oh God, it, it's so fun to run in the shoe. Really can't wait to take it back out. But yes, so the carbon fiber plate mixed with the EVA, it's, it's a really good sensation. So the EVA is isn't super soft, but it's soft enough that it's kind of protecting your legs. And then the carbon fiber plate is there to keep that early stage meta rocker activated. I, that's just the best thing I can think of. So the carbon fiber plate is working exceptionally well with the density of this foam. And guys, I absolutely love it. I, it felt fantastic out there. The midsole, I gotta say it again, it's gonna have to be a three out of three because it just feels so smooth. It makes me feel effortless. It felt good at slow speeds, at moderate speeds, at fast speeds. I took it from anywhere from six minute 30 per kilometer all the way up to three minute 30 per kilometer. And it did everything so fantastic. It, anything I threw at it, it was doing it very well. And you know what guys, that's just the name of the game with this shoe. Like it can do the slow stuff, it can do the fast stuff. Yes, it feels better at the faster stuff, but it wouldn't deter me from doing any slow stuff in this. Could this be a daily trainer? I think so. Would I want to pay 225 Canadian dollars for a daily trainer? Probably not. That's the only reason why I wouldn't use it for daily use, but guys, I'm definitely going to. Now that I have it, I'm going to use it for whatever I can because like I said, the combination of the plate and the density of the midsole and, and the upper so far has been a great package, but we're not done yet. We have to talk about the outsole. So the outsole guys, is, I don't know, they call it some like zontal rubber, whatever the heck that is. Like I, like I said, I don't know anything about material science. All I can tell you guys is about the performance and the performance, yeah, sure. I mean, it's a racer shoe, so we don't wanna have a bunch of rubber, but I did slip when I was out there running on some grass today, but sure, I, maybe I shouldn't be running on grass. That is something you could say, but I had to get around people, you know, COVID, social distancing, I gotta stay away from people, so sometimes, I have to go off the path and you know what? I almost slipped. I, I'm just telling you the truth. I don't wanna hide anything from you. This did not provide a very good grip, but on the dry stuff, it was fine. There, I guess there's not a whole lot there, which is fantastic. Like there's just rubber where it needs to be, nowhere else. And that's what we want in a racing shoe. But because I did slip, I gotta dock some points. You can't give a perfect score if you slipped. So. I have to give this a 2.5 out of three for oat sole. I'm sorry, Hoka, but I slipped. I can't, I can't lie to these beautiful people on the channel. Just tell them the truth. Okay, so we've gone through the upper, the midsole, the oat sole. Obviously, I have a good, good feeling about this shoe. I've given it a three, a three, and a 2.5. So clearly, I think quite highly of this shoe, but it gets better. It gets better, believe it or not. This shoe is 180 US dollars or 225 Canadian dollars. I think 106, 140 British pounds, something like that. But it's just a great value for that price for a shoe of this caliber is perfectly priced. Hoka, you did it right. You just priced this perfectly. Well, is it gonna compete with the Nike Next Percent or the Endorphin Pro? I think for a lot of people, absolutely yes. So like I said at the beginning of the video, if you overpronate or you wanna have a little bit more structure on your shoe for your race day and your tempo day stuff, this is the right shoe to get. I really do think so. I don't think that you'll appreciate the next percent because you'll kind of be distracted by the overpronating. 
Same thing with the Endorphin Pro. And a lot of the racing shoes are very, they amplify over pronation. The Rocket X does not do that at all. It kind of, it's a very stable ride, guys. I, it's fantastic. But for me, is it gonna replace the Next Percent and the Endorphin Pro? I don't, I, it's not gonna do that for sure. I am still gonna use the Next Percent for my half marathon races and my full marathon races, but speed day stuff, 10Ks, maybe even up to that half marathon, I would probably, I would opt for this. It's such a great shoe. It feels fantastic underfoot, so smooth, but I'm gonna keep using it for daily use as well. It's just, it's a fantastic shoe, guys, and there's, it's hard to not like this shoe. It's, I'm really, I tried and tried and tried to come up with something negative to talk about about this shoe. I just tried to look hard and see what kind of imperfections they gave, and all I could come up with was the laces. I'm just being honest. Now, that is it for the Rocket X initial impressions. I'm gonna take this shoe out for another run right this minute. I typically don't like running in shoes more than what uh, two days in a row or one day in a row, but I'm going to take this shoe out for a second day in a row just because I, I feel like having some fun and this is a fun shoe and not a shoe I have to worry about over pronating. Otherwise, I'd be taking the Endorphin Speed and the Endorphin Pro more often, but I don't wanna amplify my over pronation and this does not amplify it. And the good news keeps on rolling for the Rocket X is because you can actually get this shoe. It's not like the Nike Next Percent or the Endorphin Pro and Endorphin Speed that they sell out as soon as they're available, no. I checked again this morning and this shoe is still available. And for my good friend, Tim Gross, it's available all the way up to size 13.5 UK. So you should be able to get your hands on this shoe. Finally, finally, right? Someone is listening to the people and they're giving all sizes, accommodating everyone. Ah, <sighs> fantastic news. All right, guys, so that's gonna be all for the Rocket X first impressions. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it for you. I'm gonna be doing lots more in this shoe. I'm gonna take it for a speed day, a long run day, all that stuff. We have lots of testing to do, but the initial impressions couldn't be more positive if I'm being totally honest. I, I love this shoe, the price is right. Hoka, you nailed it. Yeah, nailed it. All right, I'll catch you in the next one. Have a fantastic evening. Keep on running, keep on drinking your water, and keep on smiling all the way through it.